Greetings and hello once again, AP Calculus BC students. Mr. Record here from Avon High School, and we are continuing our discussion here in Unit 6-BC and Topic 6 Review, which focuses on our integration techniques from AB Calculus. And the title of today's example of four from your notes is called the Disguised Form of the Log Rule. You might think of it more as a very underhanded trick that can be used with integration. But it does involve this log rule, and if you've forgotten, the log rule is just simply whenever you integrate a 1 over u form that produces the natural log of the absolute value of u. Now we're going to see that in our example, but it's also going to have a little twist to it. So if we move on to that example 4, you'll notice that uh, the integration problem is set up so that we're integrating 1 over 1 plus e to the x. And so I want to kind of discuss the things that you would probably be thinking about. What would be going through your mind if you were encountering a problem such as this initially? Well, it's very likely that you might think, try to do a u substitution. Maybe you might let u be 1 plus e to the x power. But the problem with that is that the derivative of that denominator is going to produce an e to the x that you don't see in the numerator. In fact, that numerator just doesn't have a whole lot for us to work with. So that's where you're going to have to be a little creative. Sometimes integration problems have these little tricks to them. And I tell my students all the time that these tricks are tricks. The first time, maybe the second time you see them, but by the time you see them the third or fourth time, they, they become tools or techniques. So I want to kind of motivate this a little bit as best I can. Notice that the denominator is a 1 plus e to the x. And so we think that, gosh, if the numerator had an, just an e to the x instead of a 1, we would probably be OK. Or let's say if the numerator was, say, 1 plus e to the x, then we have basically something that's equivalent to 1, and we would be OK to integrate. Well, those are the two things that you want to make happen. And the trick that we're talking about is just rewriting this. Keep that denominator 1 plus e to the x. Nothing is going to change with him. But for that numerator, we are going to add e to the x. And then we're going to immediately subtract e to the x. And then we finish it up with that dx. Now, I want you to take a look at that. We haven't changed this. We've added 0, essentially. But it's what this technique affords us now is what allows us to continue on with the integration. And that is to split this right apart at that minus sign. So you're going to rewrite this as two separate integration problems. So in other words, you're going to say that this is the same as 1 plus e to the x over 1 plus e to the x with respect to x. And then we'll subtract the integration of e to the x over 1 plus e to the x. There were a few instances in calculus AB, at least in the course at, at our school, where you would have to implement a trick like this. It's typically not something that you're going to see on the AP exam, whether it's the AB version or the BC version, though. So that's good news. So in this case, we're going to go ahead and reduce this first fraction to 1. And knowing that the integration of 1 with respect to x is just going to be x, we've already taken care of that portion. And then maybe I can drop down that minus sign. And then I'll start thinking about that u substitution that we talked about. Maybe we'll let u be 1 plus e to the x, the entire denominator, because that will allow the derivative to be 0 plus e to the x with respect to x. So there's our perfect match. So essentially, what we are integrating is a 1 over u, in this case, with respect to u. And of course, we know that the integration of 1 over u is the natural log of the absolute value of u. Now, because u is 1 plus e to the x, I'm going to go ahead and slip that in right here. And then, of course, you could put this inside of absolute values. You probably should put this inside absolute values. But because 1 plus e to the x never runs the risk of being negative, you can get by without them. 
Sometimes it's it's it looks a little stronger to recognize when you don't need them. In fact, as a multiple choice problem on my exams, I would probably not use them. And then of course we have our plus C, and that would be our final answer. Now I'd like to take a look and see what the CAS calculator says about this. So here we are, got my software open, my camera is moved out of the way, and we can actually go in and integrate. So let's get the right uh, shift plus. I'm going to get rid of the boundaries of integration here. And now we're going to put in our fraction. So we're integrating 1 over 1 plus e to the x power. Let's see, Don't I don't necessarily have to scream that x, do I, <laughs> with respect to x. And then let's hit enter. And I believe that is what we had on, on paper, right? x minus the natural log of, switch the order, e to the x plus 1. And as we see, indeed, that is what we had. So I guess the name, a disguised form of the log rule, wasn't completely untrue. We did use a 1 over u form for this, but it's what we had to do to make that happen, which was a bit tricky. I don't mean for this example to scare you, but I think whenever you um, exhaust all other possibilities, you might want to think in the back of your mind, is there something that you can add and then subtract that would allow you to split the integral up in order to have a better chance at finding the antiderivative? We're going to take a look at example five and example six in our next two videos to round out our review of AB before we move on to BC techniques. Anyway, I hope this certainly helps and we look forward to seeing you at the next video.